Hey guys, John here. Um, this is another episode of Vault of the Dungeon Master, and um, in this video, I'd like to reflect on not D and D, but a slightly different RPG, and that would be Call of Cthulhu. That's right. I'm talking about some serious shit right here. Plus, they're not the older guys. And uh, mainly in this video, I just kind of wanted to, um, I guess it's probably, um, I really wanted to reflect on some Call of Cthulhu games that I've ran within the last, within the last couple, of, within the last couple months, uh, going back to the fall. Um, and kind of my, my, kind of my touch on how I did Cthulhu. Um, when I started off, with Cthulhu, I, with Call of Cthulhu, I picked it up last summer at a game store when I was visiting some relatives in Florida. I picked this book up because I really wanted Call of Cthulhu and I, I really wanted to play it. I really wanted it. really thought, you know, this could be really good for my game, for, for my shelf and for my group. <coughs> and so... And the first game, I, after I read the rules, first scenario I ran for my group was the haunted was the haunting, or it's also known as the haunted house, which is a really good basic introduction to Call of Cthulhu and a good introduction on how exactly you can set it up and exactly what how Lovecraft horror and that right that kind of idea of horror. How it kind of can translate into a role-playing game, and just actually in general how horror translates into a role-playing game. So with that, I was kind of hooked, and I ran another, I ran another one after that. I ran another scenario that's actually in the back, also in the back of this book. Um, it was I can actually look it up now. If you don't mind me reading a book to you. Oh, ah, yes, the the ed the edge of darkness. That that that, that was the other one I ran. Both were great. Um, both took place in Massachusetts. Uh, the second one took place in Arkham. So you know, very traditional stuff for uh, golf Cthulhu. Um, and those adventures were fun. They taught me how to deal with certain things. How to kind of set the tone. Um, of RPGs, it was just really fun. Um, the next Call of Cthulhu story I have was my first attempt of a homebrew campaign, and it really came up with a couple months ago. Uh, months ago, last fall, um, I think it was November. No, it started in October, and it was the one Saturday night. The Saturday night D&D group that I'm part of, the first edition group that I was part of at the time. Which I'm still part of. Um, uh, the one guy I really wanted to play, they basically our DM of that group, really wanted to play in Call of Cthulhu, and his wife, you know, they wanted to play Call of Cthulhu. And like, okay, okay, I'll run it. So I came up with a really cool scenario where it was 1920s Paris, France. And it was really fun, and it was just cool. It was. It was I thought it had a good spin to Call of Cthulhu. Call of Cthulhu is very typically um, in the United States, you know, always in Massachusetts. And, you know, I started off very interesting. You know, I put a spin on it, and I did it where they had to investigate. It was a, basically a murder investigation that led to, you know, led to ties to, you know, underworld and led to ties to a cult because, you know, of course, it always has to be a cult. And then eventually led them led them to like Amazon and they were discovering, you know, a hidden temple, so they had some dungeon crawl stuff, and eventually you now they got back to Arkham, you know, it, it just it was a cool little pulp call through setting, which I, I think I really enjoy actually. I, I, I think I like a lot of the pulp. I mean the pulp kind of aspect Call Cthulhu can have. I understand that it's probably really not the way it's not the way it's 
really meant. It's not really the Lovecraftian way of doing it. It was just fun to do. Um, it was fun, and a lot of moments came out of that. Like a lot of it, uh, a lot of great role playing came out of that. Came out of that game. Where I remember the one character, character who wanted to run this game, dropped six sanity once, and so like he, you know, I rolled on the the insanity table, and his click, his nit was he had to wash his hands. So I would just go wash your hands, and I'd just be like, he always had to find water, and eventually he made friends with a monkey, and you know, and shenanigans ensued. Um, but yeah, that, that was that was cool about that game. I even connected it to like some ancient alien technology, um, um, and like I even connected it to the Dreamlands at one point, um, which was cool and really awesome. Um, if I and if I could ever continue that game, I will. However, for the most part, I won't let I'll ever continue that game. Even I, I did kind of leave it. I, I left it off at a good note. Um, the last one, we'll call it, the last game I want to call the game I want to reflect back on is um, one I actually had very recently, right before I started Dragonlance. I ended a 3.5 game with my current group now and my current Friday night group now. And I said, you know, one week we just took a time and we just did Call of Cthulhu. So, and this one was cool, because I based it in the 1980s in New Jersey, where they went, where they went looking, where basically it entailed the Jersey Devil. Yeah. And if you don't know about the Jersey Devil, Google it. And Google the blue hole while you're at it as well. Because they're cool little folklores that are just really cool, and really very, actually, that kind of, in my mind, fit fit kind of the Cthulhu mythos thing. That you know, yeah, you can fit it in there. Um, that was cool. There was some really cool stuff that uh came up a lot of cool hallucinogenic stuff that came up for that campaign. Like there's one point they um they were on this road going through this forest in basically the Pine Barrens in New Jersey of southern New Jersey, I forget what route it was. But it, all of a sudden they saw this giant train with it eye coming out of it, which actually I stole from what the cover of the murder on the, horror on the Orient Express looked like. But yeah, and it just came rushing by them and then all of a sudden like they, they were in cars and they swerved and wrecked their cars. And it was just, it was really cool and it was really cool and they were just like, what the fuck just happened? And that's what I love. And that and that's what I love about kind of just being a DM and being and, and just I kinda like I kind of like making my players think, and I like making making my players think of what is possible, especially in kind of a setting like Call of Cthulhu, where anything is possible. Um, and that's another thing. Even any type of horror, any type of horror you want to do, is you always have to do the unexpected, and you always have to make it different than what it appears. So yeah. Um, And then no, no, another no, four. It's always, it's always, um, actually, that Call of Duty game, I didn't actually get to finish. Maybe one day I'll finish it. Um, which I could actually, I actually didn't do very well. I could finish that game, but, eh, that game kind of, that game kind of went nowhere really quickly. It was kind of just a one shot, and that was it. But, um, nothing with horrors. You always, uh, at least I find, you always have to, Strive to keep the players on the edge of their seats. Very much like how you have a movie, you always have to keep it suspenseful. Um, I haven't really mastered that yet. Working on it. But anyway, I'll get that. Also, another another concept of horror. Um, a lot of, actually, a lot of concepts of horror, running Call of Cthulhu and running other like horror, you know, keeping dread, a feeling of dread in games. It's even crossed over to my D and D stuff. You know, I, I I like stuff that causes dread. One of my favorite I just well not one of my I, I just read I six Ravenloft for the first time and I'm like that's I mean you, you want a you want a D and D module that sets up dread, it is Ravenloft. 
I really have to read more of the campaign saying I did for that, because that is just, that's just dread. And that's just fear. Just, he keeps you thinking, and it's about in the Gothic tradition, I think that really works. To a point where you can actually probably morph Ravenloft and Call of Cthulhu together. You could actually probably do it. Uh, you can either do it either or system or, you know, for me with the with the first burning of deities and demigods, you have the Cthulhu stat, so you're all set. Um, but yeah, that's just what I wanted to do. wanted to give my thoughts on this. Um, just kind of a, just as a random thing, I just, I want to get a video out there. And um, on closing thoughts, on an update, I will be gaming Saturday, starting the Thieves Guild stuff. So I want to get a little, uh, because I think I'll start the field, but I don't know. I'm going to be down two players, and I could feasibly I could run, I could start the first session and set up some preliminary stuff, but I don't know if I really want to do that quite yet. So I might just I might end up running like something like Ravenloft to hold them over. But um, or I might just start it, you know, because I could just do an overland thing. I mean, they do have to actually travel quite a bit to get the places to where the campaign actually starts. Um, but yeah, anyway, and then Saturday we can, we're going to, I'm going to continue playing in my dad's Slave Lord campaign, but that's fun, that's going to be, that's great, we're actually moving along, module A1, really, really actually quite fast, I'd say, which is really good, because that campaign, this campaign started off really slow, in my opinion, but anyway, as always, I'm John. Hope you enjoyed the video. Please like, comment, subscribe, and give me your thoughts down below. I'd love to hear how you guys do horror. You know, what are your thoughts on Call of Cthulhu? Your thoughts on Ravenloft? Your stuff on Gotham Horror? You know, your stuff on just anything horror, anything RPG oriented. How it shape? How you know? What's your? How would you do things? What do you think of my ideas for campaigns? Sorry, I didn't go into a bit detail, but my memory is still very my, my memory is pretty foggy on those games. But yeah, um, as always, I'm John, your friendly neighborhood dungeon master, and happy gaming.